Good morning. Service on our website, and we will share in Holy Communion today, so please take him. The grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, awesome Trinity, we call you by many names, and we marvel at the mystery of your great love, presence, and power. You make us in your divine image and call us good, just as we are. Keep creating us anew to be your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, but the earth became chaos and emptiness and darkness covered the face of the deep. Yet the Spirit of God was brooding over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together God called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it, and it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let there be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, 
and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps un- upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them be stewards over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in the divine image. In the image of God, humankind was created. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and be responsible for it. Watch over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food and it was so. God saw everything that had been made and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. And there was evening and morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that had been done. And God rested on the seventh day from all the work that had been done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Word of God, word of life. We rise to greet the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw Jesus, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of Abba God, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the good news. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. I invite children to come forward. Any children who are here? Hello. Hello, Peter. Hey, friends. Hello, friend. All right. So today, it's so good to be in church together, and I want 
to ask, do you notice when you come to church, there are some things that we do in our worship service that are kind of different every week, but there are also some things that are the same every week. Can you think of anything that's the same every week? Yeah, Peter. Communion. Communion. Great. Lydia. We always speak about God. We always speak about God. You're right. That's the same. Anything else we do that's kind of the same every week? We like to collect an offering, right? We, yeah. Pray. We pray. Thank you. That's an important one. We pray. We sing songs. But, you know, there's one thing that we do almost every week, which is one of my favorite things to do. But it's, it's like very fast. And if you're not paying attention, you might miss it. And one of our readings today that we didn't read, we're saving for right now, actually gives us the words that we say every Sunday. And they are words that I actually already said this Sunday, and I want to teach them to you. And I want all of us to know that these come right from the gospel, from the end, or from the Bible, from the end of 2 Corinthians. Paul is um, giving a special greeting to his friends. So will, will you stand up with me? And I'm going to show you what, what, what I say and what the congregation says every Sunday and why I think it's so special. But we got to stand up first. And let's come up here. And Paul writes to his friends, which is, these are our friends, right? Paul says, the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, can you repeat that? The grace of our Savior Jesus Christ the love of God, the love, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Good job. And then he says, be with you all. Can you do that hand gesture with me? We can say, be with you all. Be with you all. And then you know what they say when we say that? They say, and also with you. So every Sunday, the pastor gets to stand here and say this greeting. And then everybody responds to me. And sometimes, I, it's, you know, some people like to do the same hand gesture back to the pastor as, as we do out there. And this Sunday, we're all going to do it together. But so now everybody, friends, you be quiet this time. We're going to say the greeting from the Bible. And you're going to respond to all of us. So friends, get up here and let's turn around and look. And you can repeat after me, okay? So we say, the, and you got to say it really loud out there, okay? The grace of our Savior Jesus Christ. The grace of our Savior Jesus Christ. The love of God. The love of God. And the communion of the Holy Spirit. And the communion of the Holy Spirit. And now we use our hands, right? Be with you all. Here, let's do a little bigger. We, this is, look, look how many people are here. You know, we got to do big. So, be with you all. Be with you all. And they say, and also with you. Well, that's so special. <laughs> and I love it because we're having a little conversation, you know? Like, we're giving a blessing, and they are blessing us back. And I think today we talk about the Trinity, which is like this idea of how we experience God in all kinds of different ways. And one way is that God flows through and among us is through dialogue, through conversation, through blessing others and receiving that blessing back. And so these are words every Sunday now, you can hear them in the beginning of the service. And when the pastor says them, you are invited to open your arms and say it right back just as loud, okay? Will you pray with me? You can repeat after me, okay? Dear God, thank you for blessing us. And thank you for our friends who bless us too. Help us to see you in the world, in all of our relationships, and give us peace. Amen. Okay, 
thank you, friends. You can go back to your seats. Go back to my pepper. Go eat that pepper, Lydia. That's great. Well, the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. That was good. Here we are. It's the first Sunday of Pentecost, which means, uh, according to the church calendar, it is officially summertime. And summer brings so many good things to us, right? It brings like really wholesome things like gardening and sitting in the sunshine and maybe even moving our body outside a little bit, just kind of getting back out. No school is a good thing that it brings. Thank you for that one. The other good thing it brings is really, really big, expensive blockbuster movies. Right? I think this summer we've got like some of the greatest hits coming back to us again. We've got a new Indiana Jones. We've got a Barbie movie. We've got a new, uh, like, of course, superhero movies, right? And these come back every summer. And many actually believe that the first big blockbuster movie that, that kind of set the standard for this summertime thrill was a movie made in 1975 by a young Steven Spielberg who made a killer shark movie, right? People lined up around the block, hence the name Blockbuster, in order to go see the story of a giant white shark terrorizing a summer quiet beach community. Jaws was a hit, but what Jaws also did was guaranteed that most of us will never feel 100% great about swimming in the ocean ever again. Every time I'm at the beach, I can just picture my little skinny white legs just kind of from below, little snacks for a shark that's kind of somewhere nearby. Did Jaws have this effect on anybody else too? Or maybe other shark kinds of shark attack stories, right? Well, if that's true for you, I'm going to share some really good news with you this morning, my siblings in Christ, because scientists, scientists in Southern California have for the first time, just recently, conducted a study about sharks using drone technology. The drones up above can spot with precision when and how often white sharks are actually in proximity to swimmers. And these shark-loving scientists want us to know some new data that they hope will change our Hollywood informed biases about these magnificent creatures, right? Because their research has found that, in fact, and I'm quoting the scientists, quote, swimmers are actually around sharks all the time, and they just don't know it. And the sharks aren't bothering them. So for the science, put on your science cap, as they think about it, because we're actually in greater proximity to sharks more often than we ever assumed or realized, the chance of being attacked by a shark, statistically speaking, is actually so much lower than we thought before. Don't you all feel so much better now? I certainly don't. <laughs> Friends, scientific facts cannot soothe what the imagination has already decided, right? The Jaws story, among others, haunts us, scares us, and no data can convince me otherwise. And that's the powerful thing about stories, right? They can take hold of our hearts and minds, building a whole world inside each of us, that can impact how we navigate the world and what we believe to be true. So it's pretty important, church, that the biblical story we hear in this sanctuary every Sunday begins with God's love that is so abundant, so vast, so out of control that it spills into the cosmos and speaks into being 
this planet home, every, little, every living thing, you and me. And it's so very good. What if we let this story of our Creator's outpouring of love that creates a world in harmony, in balance, teeming with diverse life on land, in the sky, in the sea? What if this story had as much of a hold on our imagination as the summer blockbusters did? What if the default settings of our hearts and imaginations were set to assuming partnership and relationship with every living thing? What if we felt shocked, hurt, or even confused every time we experienced evidence in our world that contradicted its inherent loveliness, graciousness, goodness? Today is Holy Trinity Sunday, a day named for a doctrine. And we sometimes think about doctrines as things that we learn in highly religious spaces, where theology and right belief are taught to us. But this is exactly the opposite about, this is exactly the opposite of how we must learn about the Trinity. When Genesis gets to the part of God creating humans, creating us, God says, let us make humankind in our image. So the Creator makes two. It's as if God couldn't have created us any other way than as a community. If you want to find the reflection of God in the world, you're going to find it in community. You're going to find God in the complexity, the mess, the awkwardness sometimes of people trying to get along with each other. You're going to find it in the relationships between our bodies and the soil and the stars. So really the last place you want to learn about the Trinity is by a lecturer in a confirmation class. Instead, seek to learn about the divine by watching children dance as they did last Sunday in this space, or by holding the hand of someone who is dying, or by swimming in the ocean alongside creatures seen and unseen. (laughs) Learn about the Trinity from the young transgender person who is doing a courageous thing by living authentically in a world that cruelly demands we must claim a singular and rigid identity when clearly this swirling, overflowing poet God couldn't possibly create us to be so simple. Actually, Pride Month, which is also starting right now, is a great time for us to open our eyes, to look around and learn about the unstoppable, overflowing, defiant love in community that the Trinity is all about. Or, learn about the Trinity in poetry. This past May 25th, a few of us from Our Saviors gathered with other people of faith at Plymouth Congregational Church on the third anniversary of the murder of George Floyd by Minneapolis police. Reverend Otis Moss III, the pastor of Trinity Church in Chicago, came to address the assembly, and he opened by sharing a poem. The poem is by Ross Gay, and it's written in response to the murder of Eric Garner in 2014. Eric Garner, you'll remember, was killed by police in New York, choked to death in broad daylight. This is a poem not so much about that violent act as it is about Eric himself. One small piece of who this man was, and in it the poetry of Ross Gay, and in the life of Eric Garner, I hear something about the Trinity. I learn something about a God who creates, who calls us to participate in discovering God in creation. I learned something about a God who abides with us and a God whose spirit gives us life and imagination and beauty. The poem by Ross Gay 
I'll read it now. It's called A Small Needful Fact. Is that Eric Garner worked for some time for the Parks and Rec Horticultural Department, which means, perhaps, that with his very large hands, perhaps, in all likelihood, he put gently into the earth some plants which, most likely, some of them, in all likelihood, continue to grow, continue to do what such plants do, like house and feed small and necessary creatures, like being pleasant to touch and smell, like converting sunlight into food, like making it easier for us to breathe. A beautiful poem and a tragic one, because just below the surface of these words swims the shark of white supremacy. Just below the surface is the knowledge of separation that contradicts the Genesis 1 promise, a world where Eric Gardner would just be left in peace to continue planting trees, to be a father and a grandfather, to be a person in community created as a perfect reflection of the Most High God. We need a Genesis 1 revolution, friends. <clears throat> we need to let this story, the beginning of our story, sink more deeply into us such that we live in delight rather than fear, in community rather than isolation. And I think it's in this Genesis 1 spirit that Jesus sends his disciples and us out into the world in the Great Commission, which we heard in the Gospel. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, he says. The resurrected Christ is talking to a group of 11 men who have been locked up by themselves for a couple of days, scared out of their minds, right? So Jesus here is saying, y'all better get out there and make some new friends. <laughs> Go to all the nations and see See how this thing we've been doing over here, the proclamation of God's love incarnate and alive in human community and in creation, it's actually everywhere. Jesus sends us into a Genesis 1 world, not some scary or dangerous one, to love, to heal, to serve, to liberate, and also just to delight in it. And whenever we delight in a part of God's creation, as God did on that seventh day, whenever we delight in this good creation, we, in a way, are blessing it, naming it very good, baptizing it in the name of Abba, God, of Christ, of the Spirit. So church, let's go out there and make some new friends. Let's allow ourselves to be surprised and delighted by the goodness of this creation, by our part in the dance of the Trinity, by our place in the family of all things. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. Holy Three, Holy One, you call the church to share your good news. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel, and direct all the baptized into lives of humble service. God, in your mercy. Holy Three, Holy One, you spoke creation into being and called it good. Protect lands and waters threatened by human misuse and sustain living creatures of every kind, wild animals, birds, fish, and every creeping thing. Awaken more of us to how we can work towards climate justice. God, in your mercy. Holy Three, Holy One, you have given humankind authority over the earth. Raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern thoughtfully. Heal divisions between nations that we might agree with one another and live in peace. We pray for our Muslim neighbors as they continue to recover from the arson attacks. God, in your mercy. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always to the end of the age. Surround those most in need of your healing presence. Any who are lonely, all who are grieving, and those who are sick. We especially pray for B Bruce Peterson and family, the Hepso family, Glenn, Janice, Rachel, Paul, and Anton. God, in your mercy. Hear holy Three, Holy One, you set the earth on its axis and we experience the seasons. Strengthen those enduring challenges this summer, those who suffer in the heat, parents overwhelmed by childcare responsibilities, and children experiencing food insecurity outside of school. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of that peace with those around you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Jeannie. Peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace, Benny. Peace be with you. Peace, Linda.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your Spirit. And so, with the great cloud of witnesses from across continents and cultures, with the plants and the creatures and all creation, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Santo, Santo. Santo, 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 We praise you, holy God, for the universe beyond our knowing and for friends and strangers and family. We praise you for your covenant people and for all the beloved saints who show us what it looks like to be faithful. as we grow in love. We praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who is with us always to the end of the age, and who, on the nights in which he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, and after giving thanks he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Send your spirit, your breath, your fire, your wisdom to move among us today as we share this meal. Nourish us well and renew the world with your mercy, your healing, your justice and peace. Moving spirit, moving spirit, moving spirit, keep us faithful as we grow in love. Moving spirit, moving spirit, moving spirit, keep us faithful as we grow in love. In the name of the Creator, Christ the Comforter, we pray. Amen. Joining with the people of God throughout the ages, we join together to pray the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us in this faithful and fresh 
adaptation. Gracious Spirit, who loves us like a mother, whose realm is blooming among us now and within, we pray that your compassion guide us in every action, and give us what we need for each day, and help us to be satisfied with the miracle of that alone. For a giver whose embrace brings us to wholeness without our asking, may we reconcile ourselves to one another in humility, and may we cancel the crushing debts that imprison our neighbors so that communities of joy and health may flourish. May we neither profit from nor ignore evil, but ever work to throw it with nonviolence as we co-create the realm of peace in this world, now and each day. Amen. All are invited to the feast at God's table. The ushers will guide you when it's your turn to come forward. You will take a cup on your way up. We have gluten-free wafers available for those who need them. Just ask your server. We have both wine and grape juice. The wine is dark colored and the juice is light colored. Now, for those of you joining online, hear these words addressed to you. The body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Come, one and all, to the feast of life. All is ready. You may be seated. And I am going to need maybe a couple helpers with serving, so come on up if you're able to help. Thank you. Spiritus, 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 Spirit
Spiritus, Veni Sancte Spiritus, Veni. And receive this blessing. The body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you forever in God's grace and mercy and love. Amen. may be seated. As we are sent into the world, we take a moment to learn of the ways that God is moving uh, among us and in our community and the ways that we are called to there. So anyone who has an announcement to share, you can start making your way up. Uh, As you do, I'll remind you that our Sentinel newsletter came out on Friday, so please take time to read about all the wonderful opportunities this June. Also, The South Minneapolis Day Camp is returning, and uh, we could use some more adult volunteers. So if you feel like you would have a good time with a bunch of churches that we work with and adult volunteers with kids these days in June, we could use you. Uh, So we also, if you're not able to support in person, could use donations so we can provide ASL interpretation throughout the week as one of our partner congregations is Bread of Life Deaf Deaf Lutheran Church. More information on volunteering and donations is in the Sentinel. Any other announcements? Grant. Good morning. Grant Stevenson, I have two, sorry about that, but um, the first one is we have been uh, doing a neighborhood in reach. Many of you are participating in this. We had our first block of time. Uh, I believe now we have done 22 uh, conversations, visits in the neighborhood with leaders and folks who, folks who live and work and, and uh, play in the neighborhood. Uh, I think there are 10 or 12 that are scheduled for the next week or two, and we have decided to do some more of these, uh, at least until uh, the, end of, uh, the end of June. So. Some of you may have wanted to participate in this, but couldn't make the training that we did. If you would like to participate and would like to have a conversation or be a part of a training on Zoom, uh, we'll do that this week at 5 o'clock. So let me know uh, after worship today, 5 o'clock on Wednesday. 5 o'clock on Wednesday, not every day at 5 o'clock. Uh-huh. It'd be Wednesday. Uh, so let me know if you'd like to do that. We'd, I don't have anybody right now who has said they do, but I know that there are some folks around, so we're given that time a shot. That was the first announcement. The second one is uh, some people have started reading The Great Escape by Socket Sony. Uh, Jim told me he finished it, actually. I have just started it. And we're going to have a conversation about this book. It's the one I referred to a few weeks ago in a, uh, in a sermon. So if you would like to be a part of a conversation, we haven't landed on a date, but it's going to be probably the first week and a half of August. And uh, this would be the time to get reading. It's, you know, a few hundred pages, so this would be the time to get the book. Socket Sony, it's, the book is called The Great Escape. Uh, if that's, I think that's in the, in the Sentinel as well. Uh, but if you have questions about that, you can just talk to me afterwards. On that note, um, I think it's, it's looking like uh, Socket may be, not for that date that we picked, but he may be able to come here in August as well. Uh, he's in D.C., but he may be able to come, so that would be kind of fun for us too. Thanks. Well, seeing no other announcement givers, unless Lydia, did you want to give an announcement? No. We'll, um, <laughs> we will, uh, I'll invite you to, to stand for our sending blessing and song. 
the God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. God in him is centered. He comes to us by 